Hello, guys, and welcome back. This is Eric, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts, checking out a newer DMR handheld. You know, this radio's been out for seven or eight months now, or it was released seven months ago, and you may be looking for a better DMR radio other than MD380 or 390, which has been a good radio. But this comes from Retivis, and I say it Retivis, you say Retivis, potato, potato. Uh, a Retivis Alunts HD1. Now, this is sent to me by them, and I wanted to check it out because uh, it's been a while since I touched something like a 380 or 390 or some of these other ones that are coming out, you know, the Bofeng RD5R and such. But I think we really landed on a really good radio. Boy, the technology and the manufacturing process has definitely come up in the last couple of years. So we're gonna take a look at the Alunts HD1 by Retivas. Now I'm gonna sum this whole video up in about two minutes, check it out. The reason I would want one of these, it has VHF and UHF, it's a dual band, analog and digital, okay, with a color screen on it, and we'll go through. Now, 100,000 address book contacts can be stored in here, okay? 3,000 channels, plenty of memory for all your frequencies and talk groups and contacts for your address book, okay? Uh, a really long-lasting 3,200 milliamp hour battery, fully uh, IP67 submersible, and 10 watts on high power on VHF, 8 watts on high power on UHF. So we got the upgraded power output. We got the upgraded channel capacity. We have full submersible here why, and GPS. So why would you go with something lesser? Okay. Now, that's my take on this. Uh, the, another good thing about this is fully programmable um, from the field if you wanted to add frequencies or change talk groups a lot of the older radios or when we first started coming out with these kind of radios It was really cumbersome to go through the field uh, Go to the field and go through the menu and do that and they've tried to make this really easy to do it in the field because nobody wants to take a computer with you to throw in a frequency of a repeater with a talk group, right? so um, it, it, when I, when I first hold this radio, I think I always said it, I've said it several times on the air talking with this brute force. This thing feels so solid. It's not, it's a little bit heavier than a 380 or 390, but it's definitely solid. You can drop this thing, um, and it would probably survive. Okay. I'm not going to do a drop test today, but the case quality, the speaker on this thing is absolutely full blast and total good clarity on this thing. So when you're in the vehicle and you turn it all the way up, you're going to hear it and it's not going to distort. It's a really good sounding radio. So you can take, you know, people that have uh, a 380 or 390, uh, which is UHF only, um, you know, and then, uh, or maybe the later models, uh, the T uh, MD2 2017 and such. But this one here, I have both my bands. I can put analog and digital repeaters in here, DMR repeaters, run it on my hotspot, do whatever I want to do. Without an unboxing video, it comes to everything you would expect. The drop-in charger, the antenna, the antenna connector on top is a SMA male on the radio and a SMA female on the antenna. So you can uh, use your aftermarket antenna that has the SMA from your previous radio. Volume and channels up top here, your PTT button and two programmable buttons on the side for different functions. and your programming cable comes with the radio, and it's not the standard. Uh, let's see if I can find one. It's not the standard Bofeng type programming cable. It's actually uh, don't know where it's sitting around here um, on my desk, full of stuff here. Here it is. So if I get this, so this is your programming cable, USB to Motorola style, I guess they call it. Okay, and that that goes on here like this, and you screw it on, and then you can load up the software, which we'll show you shortly, and program this thing. So, when you turn it on, uh, you can see the color screen, very easy to read, okay? Um, on here, I haven't set this thing up yet, but it has the time and the date in the bottom. It has the frequency up top, where you can go into channel mode if you have them labeled as channels, okay? And you can change the channels from the knob up top, like any other radio. But, like I said, the good thing is you can go into the menu, and you can set, let me turn it down. You can set a lot of the functions in the radio here, you know, um, without having to 
do it on a computer. Now, when you talk about a code plug that is 500 channels and 1,000 or 10,000 contacts, you're going to want to do it on a computer. But it makes it just a little bit easier when you want to dial in a repeater because, as I've said before in videos, I'm very fond of not really using code plugs. I, a lot of my radios, I just dial it up. I know the frequencies offhand. I really don't play repeater roulette as I'm traveling, so I don't need to memorize 100 repeaters. But when it comes to the area, um, you know, in my area, uh, a couple of the uh, repeaters, um, you know, I can dial them in real quick. And also, one thing to note is it does have a um, radio FM broadcast in here, receive only, but that's really cool. I like having FM radio in here um, so I can listen to, you know, radio stations and stuff when I'm out in the field. Put it on talk radio is normally what I listen to. Um, <clears throat> but, like I said, you could change a lot of the stuff in here. CTCSS tones, shift frequencies. Uh, you know, it's got promiscuous mode in the radio. So, the, another cool thing is uh, the radio ID. You can put uh, several radio IDs in the radio and have multiple users of this radio with several different DMR IDs. Here it is right here, radio ID. And you can see that I can set up to 32 IDs on here. So that's cool for, for me. I think that's cool that you can get this radio to your local club and pass it around for different people to learn DMR and to use it. You can program in, you know, all their different call signs, uh, IDs, DMR IDs. And then, you know, you give it to your buddy John. Hey, John, check out this radio. Try DMR. Set the DMR ID to his ID, and boom, he can play with it. Then you can pass it off to somebody else, and they can choose their ID. Or if you're um, a, a multi-ham household and your wife wants to take the radio for the day, she can change it to her ID. Pretty cool stuff. You know what I like about this radio with the battery? Check out the battery indicator up here. So, let's see, where's the focus? There it is, 30%. You see, I'm dying here. So, this battery indicator actually does progressively go down and give you a percentage of battery left. I know a lot of the Chinese handhelds in the past always showed full, full battery until they were dead and boop, they were gone. And a lot of people always asked in videos, does the battery indicator make sense? Well, in this one, it does. Right now, I'm at 30%. You know, I was at, uh, I'll be at 18% here soon, you know, and then I'll be at 4%. Then it's going to die. Let's take a look at the programming software real quick, the HD1 software. Now, uh, this is Windows 10 that I'm running on, so it is working successfully. I did not have to install a driver. It seemed to have worked just fine. The port should be COM8 on my machine. And we'll go to read device. Now, it'll take a little while longer than any other radio you've seen. You see it kind of slows down here, so I'll pause. And we're successful on reading. Now, so I haven't put a code plug in here yet. And I've only done a couple things just to get me on the air with it through my hotspot and a local DMR machine. Now, in this video, I won't be showing you how to make a code plug. There's plenty of videos online. In fact, uh, Ham Radio 2.0, Jason does a really good job at uh, DMR code plugs and stuff like that. You can check out Ham Radio 2.0. So what I'm showing you here is um, the basic setting. Let's see. So um, the firmware on this can be updated um, periodically from Retivas. They do have firmwares. So you can note the number of the version you have here. This one's pretty recent. I'm not sure what version they're up to now. Um, one thing I want to show you is the contacts. Now, this kind of looks familiar with a lot of DMR program softwares. You know, you have your zone information, your channels, uh, you know, stuff like that. This comes with the radio. You can see here I only made two frequencies right here uh, just for, um, you know, my hotspot and, you know, a KJ4YZI repeater, a DMR repeater in uh, Wabasso, Florida. But... If you go here to contacts, check this out, address book contacts, okay? Now, um, the link is going to be in the description of where you get the database for your address book. And remember I said when you're talking, you see a screen pop up, it shows you the name of the person and the city they're from. Well, right here, a, a 100,000 addresses you can add in here. And what I did was I downloaded a file from this website right here, radioid.net. And if you scroll through on the database, you'll see here there is a daily build of 
DMR IDs in the database for everybody. And I downloaded the user static CSV right here. Okay. And I downloaded that and I kept that in um, the desktop and I'm going to import it like this. Now check this out. This is putting in everybody's DMR ID that's on file. Okay. Right there. Now, if uh, I'm going to, I mean, there's a lot of pages here. I don't even know. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to find mine in here unless I, well, actually, yeah, I could. Three, uh, let's see. Uh, probably be on page 20. Let's see. Because I know I'm 31123. Uh, wow. Yeah, there's there's a lot of, a lot of pages here. God only knows where my ID is, you know. You see the call. So if this call hits the screen, 1107706, if that number hits the screen, that's going to be KG6PMW, Cheryl Hemp, Morgan Hill, California. Okay? So that's your address book. If you don't have this in there, it's just going to come up with their DMR ID, and then you don't know who you're talking to unless you ask them. So this is pretty cool to have this. Uh, and then you can write contacts, and it's going to write it to the radio. Uh, another thing, the uh, let's see, we don't use encryption in DMR. Um, the zone, you know, you can see here I only have two channels or selected frequencies in my zone, uh, the jumbo spot and the local repeater. And you can put more in here and you can have multiple zones. So you're all familiar with that if you're familiar with a DMR radio. So the, the, free, the software looks kind of similar, you know. Uh, I'm going to write contacts here. And I'm guessing, oh, that went pretty quick. And now at that point, you know, I mean, you really... The chances of you having to update that every night would be slim to none. If you end up, after a while, you see that you're starting to see IDs on the screen that are new uh, and that are not showing up with a name after a few weeks or whatever, then you can upgrade that or update the file. And, you know, every day people are joining DMR. So, um, you know, I wouldn't have to, You don't need to update this every day. I mean, wow, there's so many different contacts in here now. Uh, but this is uh, pretty cool. So my point was that the original... DMR radios, uh, you had to do special MD tools and all that to get this going, and now it's just built into the software and the radio, so very cool. We'll see if anybody's on TAC 311 to test this out, and I'm using my new Rugged Spot to get into DMR, so if you haven't seen that video, check out my Rugged Spot. Let me see. KJ4 YZI testing on 311. Well, he must know who I am, too. <laughs> oh, very good. Just um, testing a, a radio here in uh, a hot spot and just wanted to uh, see if it was working. Of course, you sound great on the audio on this radio. KJ4YZI. <clears throat> now, for some reason, my IDs are not showing on the screen when they talk. The uh, address book information. Um, I might have done something wrong when I was trying to put a code plug in, but they were on there. I remember that call. N6 PTS. Uh, very good. Yeah, I hear you. KJ4 YZI. Even if I'm sick, I make videos for my fans. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sick, man. I've been sick for over a week, went to the doctor, and it's not getting better. So we'll, uh, we'll have to uh, hopefully uh, get through it this next week. Uh, that's why I couldn't get to field day this weekend. Anyways, uh, I won't hold you. I just wanted to test this radio. What does it sound like on this uh, Retivus HD1, this DMR handheld? Tones once in a while can surprise you and get up there like that. 
not as often, but um, this uh, definitely has that same HD1 sound that I've heard on everybody who has an HD1. So you sound really good. Sounds great. Is this radio for you, or are you just testing out for a friend of yours or something? Now, normally that would show his information on here. I'm not sure why it's not. I'll have to check that out. No, it's for me. I'm just... Um, I've been out of touch for a while for DMR handhelds, so I'm trying to play around with them. But I know these uh, HD ones really have a good audio. That's what I'm after. I can care less uh, what features it has on it. I want it to sound good. And this one really, really sounds good. Especially when I'm mobile all the time, I'll be able to hear it in the vehicle with the, the background noise, you know? So there you have it. You know, this radio, there's a lot of features I didn't touch on. You know, there's a lot of things I could have showed about this. But this radio is is by far a, one, of, one of the really best sounding radios that I've used uh, with, you know, like a 380, 390, but better. Uh, one thing I do like here is the missed list here. So I can go in and I can see the last few calls, um, DMR IDs that were missed. So I can see, okay, well, look, Jim was, you know, on there. And I didn't hear them. The problem is, like I said, I, I had the list in here. And then I started playing with code plugs and firmwares. And I think I lost the list. So I got to put that back in the address book list. But anyways, um, other than that, this radio is really, uh, really a nice, nice sounding radio. And please watch in the next couple of days, if my voice will permit, I'm going to make a video that's going to make sense and be very important for a lot of digital users. And I want you to watch that video. It has nothing to do with a specific radio or a review, but it's really something that needs to be addressed. And I hope you watch that video in the future. Also, check out the video on my Rugged Spot, which is up. And um, more videos on the way. 7-3 from KJ4YZI.